Hello, beautiful soul family. Rebecca here. I'm excited to bring to you today a live trauma spotting session. Many of you have this question of what does it look like? What does it feel like? And I can only offer so many free sessions. So this is my way of helping you understand what is possible for you. So I put out the call a little bit ago to the community to ask those of you who are interested in allowing me to record you and post it on YouTube, I can offer a free session. And I want you to know that that offer still stands. If you're interested, I am happy to offer that to you as well. I ask that you keep in mind that this is an act of service, both on my part, obviously through time and effort and energy, but also on your part to be willing to share your story of healing and to allow the compassionate witness of our community to support you in your healing journey will help assist others see how they can also heal. So today I bring to you Beatrice. Beatrice is a beautiful soul who offered me a description to share with you. And so I will read that now before we jump into the live trauma spotting session. So Beatrice is a colorful soul who lives a creative energy worker. She lives as a creative and energy worker. She's a nature lover and a traveler who works also as a virtual assistant and designer while being energetically sensitive, deep thinking, healing, and peaceful. She feels blessed with a bright and optimistic spirit through which she has been able to make her way through painful, heavy times and still fulfill many of her desires. She cares a lot about well-being, life, beauty, wildlife, peace, and wish and wishes to see more connectedness, love, and harmony in the world. And I think a lot of us can relate to this, this description, these desires, and that's what this community is all about, is helping you remove the blocks that keep you from your purpose, that keep you as the hidden seeker, so that you can finally shine your light the way you came here to do. So let's jump right in. Please do comment below with any questions. Um, support Beatrice. Feel free to reach out to her uh, through Facebook at Beatrice BGT. Um, that's Bob George Tom. I know those letters can be difficult. So Beatrice at uh, Beatrice BGT at Facebook, if you'd like to connect with her. Otherwise, comment below, offer some support and some love, and um, let me know if you're interested in um, offering the community a live trauma, trauma spotting a session as well. I love you, my friends. I'll see you on the next one. Wonderful. So what is it that you would like to work on? Is there anything specific or would you like me to tell you more about how this works? Um, I would like to know how it's working. How it works. Perfect. Okay. So what I do is called trauma spotting. It is based on the foundations of EMDR, brain spotting, and a combination with energy healing. And so because the body keeps the score, the body is the key to our healing. So what we'll do is we'll kind of chat about some challenges in your life. I'll get to know you a little bit. We can identify something to work on. Once we've identified that, I'll bring out a pointer. I have to warn people so it doesn't scare anyone. <laughs> it's been called the magic wand as well. So once we've identified the topic to talk about, we'll kind of look at the body and see how the body's responding. And then we'll use the pointer to locate the area of the body that is most activated by the pointer position. Then from there, there's not a whole lot for you to do. That's the beautiful part about this. The body's naturally designed to heal. So by my nervous system, calming and being in a safe place your nervous system will entrain to mine that allows the body to shift over into what's called the parasympathetic nervous system state it's associated with rest digest healing growth and repair and so that allows the body to move into healing and growth and repair and so it will handle moving things through the body the mind's only job is to just follow that process follow wherever the sensations may lead uh, we want to make sure the mind is not trying to analyze we want the mind to just be present with the sensations Sometimes the body will bring memories or messages to the mind. That's fine if it does. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I'll be doing some energy work. I call in the Christ grid and communicate with the, the Holy Spirit and our creator to bring in the support that is necessary. And messages will be received and moved through me to you, as well as the angelic realm um, who will support and protect and all of those things. So from there, it's really up to the divine. Whatever comes through mm -hmm. um, is what is being gifted to you today. Does that sound good? Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> perfect, perfect. So tell me more about you. What does your daily life look like? What are the challenges that you're facing right now? So um, the challenges, I can start with that, um, are that I want to really change, like to even work-wise something else. And um, 
I notice I really want to kind of live my authentic self, but I'm very stuck and mm. I'm stuck since a long time actually. And I was getting by and it was fine, but now I really reached a point where I'm like, okay, I said, I'm not going to do this and this in work life, for example, but I need, for example, income or I need to move on, you know? And um, I really um, feel like I feel I have this, it's not safe to be me or, I also have this feeling like um, I can't do it. Like I, I, it's too overwhelming or I, I'm not made for this. Basically, this is like the foundation I felt. Okay. Um, so yeah, I guess at some point it feels like I felt so overwhelmed and that I was like, okay, I give up. I cannot do it. Yeah. But now I'm like, of course I can do it, but it's really, yeah, I, I couldn't move forward. Or I couldn't move on from my past basically or my childhood even. So this is one thing I, I feel really stuck kind of okay yeah. really stuck I, I think that's the most common challenge we face today is that feeling stuck mm. okay and what is it that you've tried to do you say you you felt too overwhelmed or maybe that you weren't for this what is this what are we trying to do what are we calling into mm. our lives basically like in general life it feels overwhelming if I let go of control I don't know what's coming um and so if I follow, for example, my interest uh, or passion with art and writing, mm. it's like there's already a block. I, I can't even think about what could happen in a good, like in a good way. <laughs> how could I be successful? Of course, like part of me, my mind knows this is how it could look like when I'm successful. But mm. somehow some part of me is like, I cannot even, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how it could happen. And um, yeah. <laughs> okay wonderful so let's talk about the dream for a little bit you said that you have a hard time sort of feeling or seeing what positive things could happen and that's very common for those of us who experienced trauma or complex traumas just the brain naturally is designed to look for the negatives to keep us safe but when we mm -hmm. have trauma we especially are exaggerated in our seeking out the negative and foregoing the positive so let's kind of take a step back from that mm -hmm. and let's wave a magic wand and say you have a billion dollars in the bank account. You can put it on the shelf. It's there forever. It'll never run out. You never have to worry about money again. Mm -hmm. Try to breathe that in, right? So there's the safe place. We don't have to fight through life anymore. And then notice if you had all of that money and you never had to worry about working for money, you get to design your life however you want it to be. Mm -hmm. How would you design your perfect life? What would your daily life look like? It would look like um, I live somewhere else. I live in a warm country. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I wake up. I just do my energy work like Qigong for Reiki. Mm -hmm. um, like to really yeah, come to myself. Then feel very grateful and um, appreciative of what's coming I will maybe visualize even how my day is going to unfold and then um, just have a calm peaceful breakfast uh, have a view at the um, at the beach at the ocean um, and then I would yeah create like go and um, either write or paint or something creative mm -hmm. and then also uh, work with people like having um I don't know, being part of something or like a community okay. and um, yeah. And then later uh, just eating nice food, mm -hmm. <laughs> also go going out and having nice food um, and in the evening, afternoon, enjoying the nature, going outside, um, mm -hmm. maybe seeing something um, cultural like music, live music somewhere, mm -hmm. something like this. Perfect. Sounds like a beautiful life. Mm -hmm. yes so I think I heard in there there's a, a theme of helping people is that I don't want to put words in your mouth so I want to make sure that I understood that correctly but you mentioned community and working with people you also mentioned Reiki so is there a desire to build that type of business um yes but like for me it's a lot about energy and I think energy transfer but I noticed that I could not be in a Reiki healer completely so I think it's more about maybe <laughs> creating art or like my writings and this transfers uh, something, you okay. know, like this can also bring healing, I guess. So 
Yes. For me, it's more about the creative expression. I okay. found this out, out recently. So, okay. Yeah. And so you mentioned Reiki. Is that because you feel you should use this certification that you've accomplished, or do you desire to do a little bit of that as well? Um. Yeah, like this Reiki helped me so much to feel more connected in general with everything in myself. And um, yeah, but I don't know if I want to follow this path really, like to deepen it and um, practice it with other people. I don't feel it at the moment. So okay, yeah. good. So Qigong, it, is, Qigong is more my thing, I think. It's with the body, you know? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. And that's okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So one, congratulations on having a dream. Not everyone who has experienced trauma is able to dream. So it, mm -hmm. it's it's still accessible for you. So that's really good news. Um, and two, it's okay to formulate a dream that works for you. Right. Mm -hmm. So you want to remember that it's safe to trust the guidance of the desires of your heart. Right. So if Reiki is part of it, great. And if not, that's okay too. Right. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. So if you were to guess what blocks you from that what causes you to feel that you're not made for this or it's not safe for you to pursue this what would you think comes to mind first mm. yeah it's like um it feels like there's self-connection missing like i'm not so strong in my foundation so because I in the last years I have kind of expanded but I couldn't hold it like mm -hmm. then something happened something I don't know um really um drained my energy so much so I went back kind of like ex I expanded but then I um contracted again mm -hmm. and so I made this experience a few times now and I really now I'm like at, at this place okay I I work since summer um at my on my foundation you know mm -hmm. so because i realized okay there's something deeper and um i really want to feel strong and um, confident in myself but also in my body of course and i know before my <laughs> connection to the body even wasn't that great yeah so i okay. guess it's all connected absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. and so without so tell me a little bit more about the expansion and the contraction give me an example of the most recent situation Okay, so um, I like warm weather, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. So the last winters, I always uh, went to Tenerife, which is an island, a Spanish island, but very south, mm -hmm. next to Africa, and it's very warm. It's still Europe, but because I'm in Germany, but um, it's very warm even in the winter. So I moved there for half a year. And um, for example, last winter I did it, it was the second time, but it's really um, <laughs> like I moved into a flat which looked super nice for me and the location was great. It was very close to the ocean. But um, first I had, I didn't um, have it for myself. I had flatmates. So um, I had flatmates um, in the end who were really like draining and really like completely not on my level. Like they were so different people, t types of people. Um, and then this uh, flat was super um, noisy. Like you could hear everything from the neighbors. Mm. And so I was, I really liked the place and the location but I had so many like draining experiences with these people coming and going in the end I lived with friends so it was fine but after these six months uh, stay for example I was like okay I cannot I want to go home basically like to Germany because it's so noisy I don't want to live in this place anymore and at that time also I decided to um, stop doing web design for example so I had a uh, one um, income stream less <laughs> and that's mm -hmm. why I also uh, couldn't really afford to move somewhere else, for example. And um, so that's why I went uh, back to Germany. And then since then I figure out like, <laughs> and I'm working on my uh, connection to myself and having a stronger foundation. And, um, and there were also some like in my work life, I got to know super interesting people or like I got involved in very, very interesting projects, but there was a lot of um, like not so healthy attachments, I would say, or the dynamic was not nice. And I tried to stay out, but I had to work with these people and it was a bit difficult. And it was really like, oh my God, I don't want to go out again and have a new project and then create the same dynamic. It's so exhausting and so annoying and triggering. So yeah, kind of like this, like 
I had very nice things happening, but at the same time, it had it really triggered something or brought something up. And yeah. It was really um, challenging <laughs> to deal with these things. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Um, it is. I'm glad that you use the word trigger because that is um, really the key word of the day. Triggers are beautiful things that help us see where we need to heal. Mm -hmm. And yet when we don't know how to heal, we tend to just shut down. And so that mm -hmm. can cause that feeling of shrinking back and playing small and mm -hmm. just kind of going back into our show. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. So we're going to learn how to do that today. We're going to learn how to <laughs> use our triggers to serve us so that we don't go back into shutdown. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to switch gears a little bit. And if you're okay with it, tell me a little bit more about your childhood. Did you feel safe, seen, heard, cared for, and loved as a child? Uh, no. <laughs> um, I had I have a really nice family, like my mother and two sisters. And I also grew up with my grandma. Um, and they're really lovely. And I love them. But um, emotionally... I was, I experienced this neglect and I can't even say how exactly it started, but my impression is that um, because my parents separated when I was two and a half years old and it was like, no one explained me. I mean, I was very small, but like this change caused so much um, yeah, friction inside of me or like I was actually like, I had the sadness and everything, but I had no place. There was no space to to process this for example because my mom I don't know what she did <laughs> I, I was too small you know so she yeah. she um I don't know how she handled it and my older sister she was fine and my younger sister wasn't even born so um I think there it started kind of that I felt super alone with my feelings which I couldn't express obviously um and then it just continued and I think I orient oriented myself um on the outside of course and they seemed all doing fine. And so I kind of suppressed this. And then at the same time, like my grandma and my mom, they are not really um, emotional intelligent. And um, when I got angry, for example, with four, five, then I just got isolated, basically. So they put me somewhere else because they couldn't handle this, you know, these mm -hmm. things. And then, of course, um, I stopped getting angry because it made me feel more power, powerless, powerless, yes. So um, these things, and I think I felt so um, like in a parallel reality sometimes <laughs> that they were doing this um, life and this thing and everything seemed fine, but I was seeing and feeling things and I was like, I cannot connect this to what's going on. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's a really weird feeling, but it's how it felt. Yeah. And, and they yeah. were really nice and they loved me. I know this, but the emotional level got completely like um I was very alone felt very alone and yeah and tell me more about you said something made you feel powerless was it the anger that made you feel powerless yeah I think um like like um my anger is really <laughs> I mean it's a strong sign that something's wrong with it and yeah. even like and it didn't help it didn't help help uh, that something changed Okay. So it made me like, what can I do? And then uh, after my first Reiki training, for example, I had a dream where it was super clear, like I got angry. It was a dream, right? I could see me as a small <laughs> kid, but I got angry and my grandma was laughing at me. Mm. And then I went away in the stream, right? Um, I went away and decided to um, stop loving her because this was kind of her punishment <laughs> because she didn't like, she made fun of me or whatever. She didn't help me with this anger. Or she didn't understand me. And then the only way I could feel a sense of power was like, okay, I stopped loving you. So this came up in the stream after I did the Reiki training. Okay. Yes, that's interesting. And the only way it, it felt, the brain felt it could have any sense of control over the situation was by withdrawing love from your mother. Now, mm -hmm. that was a dream that you had later in life. Did you yeah. feel that you did that as a child? I think so, yes. Okay. On some level, I probably did it like really yeah which fits to this being withdrawn you know like not showing my love so much or mm -hmm. like part of me showed it of course but it was more in a people-pleasing way also when mm -hmm. I think about it now yeah. um so I think like my loving carefree super nice nature 
was kind of shut down also, but also the grief and the sadness and everything. Tell me more about the loving, carefree part of you that shut down. Now it's coming more up and I would say I just, I'm just a very loving person and uh, I have a big heart and um, I can just, like, I love my family. It's just on some level, I completely love them and I wish them the best and I uh, want them to be happy in everything. But um, I wasn't living this out or like, even I wasn't so aware of that. <laughs> Yeah. That. And, and when it comes out now I'm sometimes like okay what do I do with all this love I don't know like this affection you know but um yes. good. that's good it's still there do you yeah. remember as a child recognizing that that part of you was shutting down no I I remember like I don't know so much what happened between let's say 7 and 12 or 13 and I think I just, I was withdrawing a lot. I was still doing the creative things I want to do again, like drawing and writing. But I also um, were playing a lot of, was playing a lot um video games, for example, like really kind of disconnected from my sisters, for example. I had friends, but not so many. And um, I don't know what happened with the <laughs> loving part in that time. I think it's more like my, for example, I was writing stories mm -hmm. or painting my my stories. They became more dramatic, let's say. Like really when I remember nowadays, I'm like, where do I get these stories from? Because they're really like um, not nice, you know, like they're w good, but um, like so sad or something like this, like really tragic something. Okay. So yeah. and those, those stories became more dramatic and tragic between seven and 12 or was it prior to that? in this age okay okay and that's when you you feel that the the carefree part of you shut down more so yes okay. yeah okay. Mm. and are there any life experiences that happened between seven and twelve that you think may have contributed to that no I, that's I don't remember so well what happened like I went to school I don't know what happened <laughs> yeah so if I may intuitively interject, there there is a buildup of emotion that is mm -hmm. happening throughout the younger years. And you're feeling this anger, or you're feeling this frustration, and you're feeling powerless. This is what creates complex trauma. Mm -hmm. When we don't feel seen and heard for an extended period of time, we can't escape the battlefield, if you will. Mm -hmm. right? We go into shutdown. And especially after age seven, you're moving into a new phase of development as a child mm -hmm. so you've solidified your program right so mm -hmm. when they say the program those zero to seven years we're in that programming our subconscious mind to understand this is how life is going to work and so then after that you come to a place of sort of acceptance but mm -hmm. there's also a numbing out that is required to be able to tolerate the fact that your needs are not going to be met mm -hmm. right and so those video games offer an escape right and so yeah. we like you say, detach from yourself. You don't have that foundation of understanding. How do mm -hmm. I meet my own needs? Can I even meet my own needs? Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So when there's something about this phrase that you've used, losing or uh, the loving, caring, free part of me shut down. So when you say that phrase, do you notice, does your body respond in any way? I feel like a sadness inside when I think about this now. Yeah. Like inside in the core, kind of upper and body. Are you saying maybe solar plex, solar plexus area, maybe in the heart as well? Yeah, exactly. Like in the middle here and deep inside. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And how would you describe that sensation? Give it any word you want. Sometimes people say it feels like putty or silk, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. However, However you want to describe it. Mm, no, it feels very, I don't know if it's the right word, uh, dull. Like mm -hmm. it's so, it's just there and not lively at all. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I got used to it kind of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And on a scale of one to 10, how dull does it feel?
Evan. Okay, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just wanna draw some correlations to what you've explained to me about your challenges compared to your childhood, if that's okay, before we dive into the healing portion. Yes. Mm -hmm. So kind of keep in touch with that sensation. We wanna stay with that sensation. Okay. Just kind of notice this dull ache, this dull feeling in my heart and in my solar plexus and the general core of your being is something that you're used to. That feeling of losing almost your spark or your light. That loss of the loving, carefree part of you. It felt trapped. It felt disempowered. And it just wanted to shut down. So at the any any sign of threat or restriction or friction or blockages or difficulty, my response is going to be going back to that shutdown, going back to the dull ache of this is just how it is. I have to sacrifice the loving, carefree part of myself, right? Your source mm -hmm. of creativity. And now notice how that connects to not feeling safe to be you or feeling overwhelmed when you try to step into something more carefree and loving, right? Things like mm. expressing creatively through painting and writing. That we developed the subconscious program that we're not going to be able to do those things and we're going to have to forego that part of ourselves. And so the only option is to shut down and to become numb again. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yes. And like, I never felt it like this. It's like a very deep feeling. And I feel like, yeah, it's like, probably I never um, noticed it before because it was always there, like, well, since I can think, kind of. It feels really like it's always there and really like this resignation and like, yeah, what can I do? Yeah, giving up. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And that's, that's often very connected to why we we play small we shrink we mm. pull back we just don't even feel like it's worth trying mm. right so keeping that sensation in mind feeling that again in your body now also remember this recent expansion and contraction experience that you had you thought the flat was going to be amazing but it was a little too loud right you thought that you would be able to find a beautiful place in a warm warm country or warm island but it didn't work out. Does that feel similar in your body? Yeah, there's like, this feeling is totally there, like in the background <laughs> all yeah. the time it feels. And then I have another feeling coming up like, no, but I, uh, I won't give up, you know, like <laughs> it can't be it. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. actually a really good sign so congratulations you're already starting to do some of the processing work that's what mm -hmm. we look for is we we have the stuck feeling and it, we're made up of parts right you have the two-year-old and the seven-year-old and the 12-year-old and your adult self your all these parts show up and mm -hmm. so the higher self says no there's hope right <laughs> but the two-year-old says yeah but mm -hmm. right the 12-year-old says we're just going to shut down yeah Right. So notice you're hearing all of those parts and that's great that you're already accessing the resourcing. Mm -hmm. So now holding that sensation in your mind again, that dull sense in your core, we're going to bring out the pointer and just notice as I move the pointer, you're going to keep your eyes on the pointer, but your awareness on the sensation in the body. And just notice how that sensation shifts and changes as I move the pointer across the screen. Notice, is that more or less activated in this position? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. I want to measure that against this position. Is that more or less activated here? There, it's more activating. 
And then does that increase or decrease as we go up? No. No. Nope. You can check it down as well. Does that increase or decrease as we go down? Yes. I'll just adjust it. I can hold this here for you. Now from here, all you need to do is stay present with the sensations in the body. You want to ask the mind to only be present with and aware of those sensations and not necessarily analyze them. Just take a deep breath into that sensation. Surrender to the body. Remember that the body is designed to heal and the divine lives in your body. There's nothing for you to do but allow the body to handle its process. And remember to breathe. And what are you noticing now? I notice um, a little bit of heat in my uh, right knee. And it's getting warmer here. And it feels like um, also like this heat when you feel ashamed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So while those sensations are not awesome, the process and the progression of the sensations moving and shifting and changing is a good thing. So shame is not fun, but I can promise you it will dissipate with your loving time and attention. So stay with that feeling of shame. Just notice the area of your body that calls your attention most and be present with it. What are you experiencing now? I experienced more heat in my chest area. And like really, it feels very uncomfortable. Like parts of me are like, I don't want to yeah. okay. go further. But yeah. yeah. So you're doing good. You're doing a good job. You're right where you need to be. Notice those parts. That are saying I don't want to go. Give them a little love and assure them that this is the path to freedom. And stay with it. You're doing good. Just notice the area of your body that calls your attention most.
what's coming up for you now. Um, now my chest feels more tense, like more closed. And also like I have the thoughts coming up. I don't have enough time. Like there's not enough time for this. Okay. Yeah. So that's a feeling of hypervigilance. That's a trauma response. The addiction to rushing and protecting, keeping things under control. I just want to breathe into that sensation. And what are you experiencing now? Kind of a um, resistance or like an argument, like there's not enough time. <laughs> and like, yes, there is enough time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. But the, the, it's not so um, tight anymore. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yes. Very good. Stay in the body. What area of your body is calling your attention most? Are you still in the chest? Mm, your chest and somehow here. Okay. Okay. So we've moved. Describe that feeling for me. The sensation. Yeah, also tense, like, or like, yeah, not relaxed. <laughs> okay. Let's notice the part that says there's not enough time. Let's feel into that feeling. Just notice how old does that feeling feel? If you were to give it an age. Um, five, six. Okay. Can you remember why she might have felt that way, that five or six year old? No, but I have now a feeling like I feel trapped. And you just notice what area of your body calls your attention most as you feel that feeling of being trapped. Again, my chest. Okay. Describe that sensation. It's a really contracting like something is like a cage holding me tight here mm -hmm. like the chest okay. okay let's spend a little time with that sensation
what are you experiencing now? It's getting a bit um, lighter and it feels also connected to my belly. Like now I feel a bit more connected. Um, How would you describe that sensation? Also, that like the the trap feeling is um, also felt in the belly, but it feels also more um, like warmer in a good sense. You know, like there's there's something, there's a connection. Right, beautiful. It's excellent progress. Let's just stay with the sensation that calls your attention most now. Breathe into it. And what are you experiencing here? It feels um, like it's still kind of heavy on my chest, but I feel there's a lot of energy and it's also now connected or like sickering into my legs, which is also a good feeling. Yeah. Right. Right. I'm getting the sense that we should call forward the part of you, the little girl that felt trapped. Can you remember that trapped feeling? You said you felt alone and there was no one to help you with your feeling. I don't feel so trapped anymore, but still like heavy, like there's something that makes me feel just like burdened, not so trapped anymore, but burdened. Okay. So when you tap into that burden feeling, how old does that feeling feel? A bit younger, four maybe, yeah. or maybe younger, okay. I say four. Mm -hmm. We don't have to be precise, right? We're just getting in touch with the feeling of that version of us. We want to call her forward. See her in your mind's eye, keeping your awareness on the sensation in the body. And going to her in your mind's eye, getting down at her eye level. And feeling in your body the way she felt in her body in that moment. be with her through this process. And ask her, what does she need? Let that emotion come up. Don't suppress it. This is how we break through. She needs 
an open heart, like a heart to heart connection. Feel in your body the way she's feeling in her body right now as she asks for please just open your heart to me. And give her what she needs. Let that emotion come up, don't stop it. Just feel it with her, be with her, and it stay with the sensations in her body. What are you experiencing now? I experience um, a slow but a heart opening, like really getting on the heart level. Mm -hmm. Good. Explain that. Describe that feeling in your sense or the sensation in your heart. Give it some more words. Be with it. Understand it. Express it. Mm. It feels like there's a huge wall or like something really heavy and big but with a very soft loving graceful yeah feeling or sensation it's like it's opening it's melting kind of like this okay. let's stay with that sensation of melting The feeling of expansion without contraction. What are you experiencing? More lightness. The, it doesn't feel heavy. Well, it doesn't feel too heavy anymore. I feel, um, yeah, warmth, heat <laughs> under uh, my um, knees. And, yeah, kind of like a happy feeling is emerging. Good. Good. So let's spend some time with those. We want to anchor in this resource. Right. Just feel the happiness and the expansion. The knees wanting to move, ready to run. No more freezing. Just feel that. Make this your new emotional home. This is what it feels like to come home to yourself. Are you noticing anything else? Mm. Mm -hmm. There's still like, I would say between heart and yeah, maybe the same, so like in the middle, there's um, like something more rigid. It's, it's not, um, it's hard. It's not uh, heavy, but it's hard. Let's stay with that for a moment. Is that in the solar plexus or closer to the sacral? It's in the solar plexus, yes. Mm -hmm. 
your source of power. Let's crack that one open too. I have too mm -hmm. many walls. Just be with it. There's nothing for us to do. We don't need to push it. Be with the sensation. What are you experiencing? I experience um, expansion or um, like there's more space. Right. It's getting more spacious. Right. Beautiful. Let's give it another minute or two to really anchor in that space and expansion. how are you feeling overall yeah like the uh, weight is lifted off mm -hmm. uh, okay. it feels so much clearer here now yeah. so let's tap back into that original memory you said you stopped uh, or you shut down the loving carefree part of yourself How does that feel now? Um, it feels not, I'm not used to it, but it feels more, um, more happy, more free. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do we still feel that dull feeling in the stomach? No, no. Beautiful. So let's imagine for a moment, we go back to expansion without a contraction, right? The next steps towards building a life that not only are you excited to live, but you actually love. Moving to the island. How does your body respond to that? Yeah, there's a sensation of ease and relief. Good. And like, Good. like the opposite from trying and efforting so much, you know? Excellent. Yes. Mm -hmm. And typically that would bring up, a, oh no, what if it happens like it did before, right? Mm -hmm. Versus, okay, we can do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So remember, it's safe to trust the guidance of the desires of your heart, which means your heart is guiding you towards your purpose. And if you desire island life, then that is what is needed to help you thrive. And through the elevation of your life and your being and your self-actualization and your vibration, you are rising all the other boats with your tide. Right? Mm. So the tide rises all boats. Yeah. So the next time we experience something like loud roommates or some sort of trigger that makes us want to shut down, we're going to recognize that that's a trauma response. So shutting down is not what's going to elevate us in any way. Mm. 
instead we ask questions. So look at the etymology of the word asking. It's as king, right? Remain as king by mm -hmm. asking questions. How can I find more alignment through this experience? Mm -hmm. Right? So oftentimes we'll come into a situation with loud roommates or difficult coworkers and we'll say, oh, I can't. I just have to go back to my shell. Right? Mm -hmm. That's, we don't want that to be our response anymore. We want this to say, oh, life is showing me this isn't quite aligned for me, right? I mm -hmm. need quiet roommates. I need aligned coworkers. How can I adapt the situation to be more aligned for me? Okay. So the brain, <laughs> overactive emotional limbic centers of a traumatized brain will tell you, you have to go back to Germany. You have to get another job. Your dream is squashed. Mm -hmm. You may as well just give up. Mm -hmm. right? That's your trauma response. Versus now we say, okay, I see a trigger. That just means something is a little misaligned. No big deal. <laughs> I go into my body and say, what am I experiencing right now? I sit with that sensation for a few minutes, not just a couple seconds, right? Sit with it. Notice how you went from dull and heavy and locked down to mm -hmm. expansive and free. That's what we're mm -hmm. looking for, right? Spend the time with the sensation in the body, Find that expansion. Notice when, this is a key point, when we are in a triggered trauma response, we are in our sympathetic nervous system state. It is very masculine. It is very controlling. It is very blocking and resistant. Mm -hmm. That is the opposite of our feminine, magnetic, receptive, allowing, creative, able to receive feminine state of the parasympathetic nervous system state. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we want to move from triggered into the body, sit with the sensations till we find expansion. Then we will be able to receive, ah, okay, what if I just go down to the coffee shop and look at the roommate ads on the board down there? Ta-da, there's your solution, okay? Mm -hmm. So we ask the, the question, how can I find something more aligned for me? We process in the body. We move from masculine to feminine then we can receive the guidance on how to move towards our dream or alignment even more. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes, totally. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. How do you feel overall right now? Yeah, I feel much better, really. Like okay. more hopeful. I had hope already, but I felt so trapped and stuck. Yes. But now I feel more, because it's true, it's this receiving. And I... I'm, I was so used to being contracted then and not being able to receive and yeah so and I feel like I can handle this more yeah I was, I was seeing a visual of sort of these these prison walls or this barrier or this very hard um, it's like a crust around your heart that the walls were so thick and we had to kind of crack that open and yes. pull the little girl out of there and tell her it's going to be okay come yes. shine brightly right open up that <laughs> open up that uh, crust or shell and, and let the light shine through, right? Imagine those chains falling off of you. The world mm -hmm. needs the light and the gift that you have to offer. Mm -hmm. yes. You have to, you have to let us see you though. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Beautiful. So one last point to note, we did sort of pull the cork out of a wine bottle, if you will, right? Your body has been holding on to this your whole life. So there can be a feeling of decompression it's not depression right but your body may kind of ugh, it feels tired it's like okay <laughs> mm. I don't have to hold on to that anymore so if you feel kind of a a decompression in your energy that's perfectly normal it's great that it's late for you so you can rest and go to sleep make mm. sure you listen to your body going forward your body is a beautiful resource that wants to help you heal mm -hmm. so she has beautiful messages for you make sure we're listening right the mm -hmm. mind gets in the way so we want to get the mind out of the way and let the body speak. Okay. And then also remember water, minerals, and grounding. Those are going to be okay. three important things for you over the next 48 hours to make sure you're supporting the body and sort of the decompression or the purging process. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sending you love, beautiful friend. Thank I you. hope to see you again in the future. I'll send you more information if you'd like to, to work together again in the future. Yes. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. We'll be in yes. touch. Take yes. care. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bye.